Hi everyone and welcome to Oscar Outdoors. Join me in this one as a hammock camp with the English woodsman and vegan outdoors. Right, welcome back everyone. So as in a little intro, I'm hammock camping tonight uh, with the two Dan's English and vegan uh, outdoors. So yeah, um, where we are, we've been here before. Uh, in English woodsman and bushman Mick joined me on that one. And we had like a bit of a hammock camp all together. Um, and it was quite a good video. I'll leave a link to that in the description box below. Uh, but yeah, tonight I'm hammock camping. I'm the only one out of the three of us that are hammock camping. Uh, I'll go around and show you their setups as they're doing them. But yeah, I'm in the DIY bespoke hammock where I've sort of taken a load of bit, different bits of gear and put it all together and made what I want to think is a, a really good setup. Uh, but I've had some few tweaks to them as well and I'm going to need some of my hammock tips from previous videos as well tonight as well because I bought a new tarp just for this setup. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to get set up. I'll see you in a sec. Right, so we'll go over this hammock, as I said, this is the one that I've put together a load of gear and called it the one that I've designed or the, my DIY hammock setup. Uh, so yeah, the carabiners are the 12 kilonewton ones available from uh, AliExpress. Uh, tree straps, same. This is the climbing accessory cord that I use as structural ridge line uh, going across there. And then this is the hammock, it's a Yelangezu hammock. Um, coming down a little bit, you can see here I've got a, a net hammock clipped in that I use as a, a gear sling underneath. And then the snug pack underquilt, let's put some lights on for you. Snug pack underquilt um, that I've permanently stitched to the hammock. And then at this end, cam snapped it. Uh, probably would have worked better with Velcro, but my stitching skills went up to it. But yeah, permanently attached, so it's just literally pull this out of the bag and away you go. Uh, on the inside, you can see there's a ridge line using the freewheel uh, climbing accessory cord and then these intermittent plastic hooks all the way across. This is a new addition, like a little clip light on the inside 
going to an internal zip puller. I'll show you that in a bit more detail in a minute. Uh, Ridgeline organizer, so a few pockets and things for bits and gubbins out your pocket. Uh, these are the pre tie prussics for my phone holder that I've made, and then another zip line puller coming down to the other zip. Uh, yeah, and then same on the other end, apart from obviously we've just got one further up. This is the head end, so you've got one that goes further up and around. On the inside, uh, I've now got plans to attach the snug pack hammock quilt. I'm going to maybe attach a zip on this side and uh, tie it out using that. Leave that set up all in there. Uh, another little addition that I've added is these. So I've utilised the tab that was on the under quilt and then attached a the guy line just so I can spread the hammock out and uh, pin it out. So I've got one of them on either side which I'll pick out in a very short time. But yeah, that's the setup. Uh, let's get the tarp up. Right, so there you go. Uh, hammock's all set up now. You can just sort of see here the guy lines that I've done and it's just sort of widened up uh, the hammock. So now you can see the tarp on the floor there. It's going to be my first ever use on this, but I bought that tarp for this setup. Uh, so I'm going to set it up now. Right, so as I said, this is the uh, tarp. Um, that I've picked up for this, so you can see it's like a hexagon shape. Looking at that there, um, what does it say? Weight 1.142, height 110. Sorry, width 142, height 110, length 71 inches, or 360, 280 by 180 centimeters. Uh, weight 1.87 pounds or 850 grams. Uh, waterproof, sunshade, windproof. Right, let's have a quick look at what we're getting. Like, as I said, this is the first time that I've opened it. And I'll have to apologise about my voice as well. I'm just feeling a bit run down. I've had that cold virus that's going around and killing everybody off. So yeah, that's the tarp itself is in there, black in colour. Just run that down there, and then you get this. So a little peg bag. Feels like some guy lines in there as well, which will be a uh, decent. Yeah, little tri-point aluminium pegs, sort of branded as well. One, two, three, four, six of them. And then six red guy lines. I'll be changing them out. Uh, so as it's a new tap, uh, I'm going to revert back to my hammock tips and I brought with me uh, a length of bungee cord that I'm going to add to all the tie-out points. Uh, so I'll show you me doing that as I'm doing it. So yeah, right, let's crack on with it. Right, okay, so for this next bit, uh, obviously I'll need the tarp, a knife, and a little lighter. So, again, I've another little Amazon purchase. Forever looking on Amazon. Wife goes mad. <laughs> um, got this, like, little lighter and torch. So sort of all in one, I'll show you that in a second. Just going to get the tarp out of the bag. Yeah, here we go. Let's say a torch, like so, and then just here, take the lid off, and it becomes like one of them little electric lighters. Same button, cool little cross member, USB rechargeable. So awesome little find. But yeah, uh, so I need the tap. I need the bungee cord and I need a knife. This is the Mora Knife uh, 511, uh, sent to me by Dan Howe, one of my subscribers, a long, long time ago. But I use that for this sort of thing, so I'm going to stick the light around my neck. Oh no, I'm not, because I've got my hat on. <laughs> and then uh, find some tie-out points. Right, so, as I've got to set my tap up, uh, both hands have just gone for a little bit of it explore. So on each tie out point you want probably This much probably about five or six inches So if you just take your cord and just nip it over And get your lighter And just singe both ends Just neatens it up and stops it sort of unraveling Looking a bit 
a bit worse for wear. So we'll then find your first tie-out point here and just feed it through. Take both ends together and then just tie an overhand sort of fixed loop knot. Sorry, I just had a bit of a coughing fit. As I said earlier, I'm not <laughs> that well at the moment. Probably shouldn't even be camping to be honest, but this is my reset. What do you guys do to do to get a reset or hit that reset? This is what I do. Come camping. So yeah, just tie a simple overhand sort of fixed loop knot and then you've got a little bit of wind resistance then on all your tie out points. So I'm gonna do that to the rest of them. I'll see you in a sec. Right, so now we've done that, you can see I've got all the guy lines laid out on my legs now. Take your first guy line, find the back end of it. And take your newly attached bit of bungee and just do a simple cow hitch. So go through, bring the knot through, and then bring your both tails through. Obviously one's going to be longer than the other. And then pull down, so that's simply attached like so, cow hitch, but pulling down on the knot. And then with the little tail that you've got there, if you just do half a fisherman's knot, or half a double fisherman's knot, whichever you want to call it, like so and it just stops that feeding back through on itself and obviously gives you that little bit of tension as well so yeah I'm going to do that to all six tie out points right so there you can see uh, we've just got the type up and just in time thankfully we have got a little bit of rain but nothing to write home about I'll take you into the type and just show you that in a second uh, but yeah there it is all set up uh, I'm liking the shape Looks like there's going to be a lot of different um, sort of setups that I can do with this, but I quite like just the standard A-frame of this as well. Uh, so yeah, let's take you in and show you a little bit about it. So I'm just showing you that it is raining slightly. You can just see a little bit of moisture build up on there. Uh, but as I said, not to write home about. But yeah, it looks uh, a good strong tarp, this. I'm liking it, and then obviously that's the bungee that I've just added in. Going down the guy line and then coming back up, and then you can use... The bungee at the top to keep all the excess guy line that you've got off the floor uh, stopping you from tripping over on it and stuff like that right i'm getting hungry dan's boiling me some water i'm going to start cooking can't wait to show you what i'm cooking so as you can see temperatures dropped uh, a little bit as well so i've put on me uh, new jacket this is the uh, snug pack tack free insulated hoodie 
um, I can already feel myself warming up in this and as you can see again it's getting quite dark so I brought with me this so this is my head torch case that I got from my Phoenix and then inside there you can see look it's absolutely brand new is my HM50R now you can if you can work out on there see it's been engraved with my name on there perfect but look at the size of it compared to my finger not even the full length of my finger um i've started to do the review on this but not got around to it as yet but it's going to be ideal so i'm just going to don that on my napper so that i can see what i'm doing so while it's in there as well i'll tag off in a minute while it's in there you can sort of rotate it round to the angle that you need but yeah right let's get cooking i've been looking forward to this because i've been preparing for this camp all day at home uh, so in here i have what i'm going to be cooking with now, i said in a couple of videos ago that i was going to do a curry from scratch in the woods so i've been practicing i've been sort of researching and speaking to an old school friend uh, about recipes and things like that and what I'd need so I've been out to the local sort of Asian supermarket and picked up a load of spices you can see all the little pots in there and then I've written on the top what's in each one you see that cumin seeds I think that says I'm reading it backwards don't forget you won't be in a bit though uh, yeah and then sort of ginger paste and garlic paste some oil some bay leaves and then plenty of room for more up top and then just my little knife there but that's the uh, powders a little spice set that I'm going to need for tonight's meal so let's see what I'm cooking uh, so in my little bag of tricks today got a couple of onions uh, a capsicum Think that was called or just a small green pepper a couple of tomatoes a block of butter uh, five or six green finger chilies there that's that in there and then in my little pot, because I know that this is going to be way too much for, for me, the ingredients that I've bought. Um, I've brought a little tub as well, so that I can take some home with me. But I've got some uh, mutton leg mints. And in here I've got some coriander, fresh coriander. Oh, and some fresh mint. Right, let's get cooking. So Dan's just made me my uh, me brew in this engraved cup. And then they, they did a practice one on the lid, look. Just to see if it would take it. Can you see that? Yeah, practice one on the lid just to see if it would take. With it being titanium, and it did. So I'm well impressed with that. Right, I'm going to start preparing uh, what I'm cooking. So first of all, I'm going to start off by heating the oil um, and then a little bit of butter and then start adding the ingredients. And I'll talk you through that as I do it. But I'm going to do a, a little bit of chopping before I get going. See that, I like that little table. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Who was that by? Same as chair? That head away, yeah. Quite cool. It's made this a lot easier. Yeah, yeah.
I say you just want to keep it short, wouldn't you? No. Got you. I did. Thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago. Okay, so the first step is to heat up some oil. So 50 ml of oil there. You want probably just a little under 50 ml. Maybe, nah, you know what, get it all in. All 50 ml there. Straight in. Let that heat up. When it's heated up, we'll do the next step. Okay, now it's nice and hot. Put two tablespoons of butter. Get that added in. Get that nice and hot as well. Okay, next step, just adding in a couple of bay leaves. Do me. It's just like a tablespoon of cumin seeds, a handful of green cardamoms, and about ten cloves. Next, just the uh, onion that I chopped up earlier. There's two onions I'm ready to chop. And then we'll cook that until they're nice and brown. So I'm just adding in about a tablespoon of garlic paste. Next up. And then uh, also a tablespoon of ginger paste. Roughly anyway. <laughs> Get from a different angle. Okay, so the next step is to add in the uh, five green chilies that I chopped up. It would be a lot easier at all if we put them all in like individual pots and stuff instead of just having them sort of placed all around. I uh, borrowed that little jolly bag from uh, Daniel's Vegan Outdoors. And then I've had bits 
placed on my chopping board. I've got some bits segregated in the pot. Just a bit all over. So yeah, give them a minute or two and then we'll have the next bit in. Okay, the next bit is the uh, capsicum. Add that in, finely chopped. Same as the onion. Try to get all that in the pot now. Okay, so in uh, no particular order, now we start to add the uh, seasonings in. Coriander powder, about a tablespoon of each one, so just enough one of these pots. Turmeric, uh, red chilli powder. crushed cumin seed and uh, garam masala ok so now we've got them get it all mixed in Yeah, so the next bit is uh, tomato. It's supposed to be puree, but obviously I've not got the facility to puree it out here, so I'm just having tomato in. I just finally chopped it, as you can see. Now I'm just going to mush it up in the pan, hopefully, and that'll sort of puree it a little bit. Uh, but yeah, I'll uh, get on with that. About another tablespoon of butter. Some finely chopped mint leaves. And some finely chopped coriander. Right, so we're almost done. Still just a little bit of mince to turn. But this looks and smells exquisite. Oh. I'm feeling physically a lot better just by doing this in the woods. Even though I've been so sort of down recently with this bug that's going around, not COVID, I've done the test. But yeah, the bug that's going around at the minute that everybody's sort of catching and dying from it ripped through my house and this has just been a great way to hit that reset switch. 
Match that same a lot, hit that reset. <laughs> yeah, I am so looking forward to this. I'll uh, get some more recipes from my friend in the coming weeks. And then bring them to you guys. But yeah, I've got plenty of plans to do a lot more Asian style outdoor cooking. Right, I'm going to give that another five minutes or so just to get these last few bits of mince. And then it's time. Two litres, mate. How's that look, people? This smells amazing. And obviously, it's giving me a great sense of achievement as well. Oh. Taste test. Oh my god. That is amazing. I think I'm going to take it in the arm anyway. <laughs> oh, right, I'm going to sit back, eat this, and then probably die from uh, being too full. <laughs> See you in a minute. Well, stick a fork in me, I am done. I know I said I'd made enough so I could take some more. I couldn't stop eating it. <laughs> It was I know. It was absolutely gorgeous. I've left like probably four or five mouthfuls, but absolutely gorgeous. Oh. Right, I need to get uh, tidied up. Then I think it's chill out time. Well, what a night that's been. Uh, great company, great food, great banter. But it's time for me to hit the hay. See you in the morning. Well, good morning. It's about quarter past twenty past seven, something like that. And I woke up to a strange man stood at the bottom of my bed. <laughs> yeah, English woodsman got up and uh, went for a little bit of a walk. And I woke up to just see him stood. <laughs> He's now putting kettle on for his bath, so uh, jobs are good. Isn't? Vegan uh, outdoors, still asleep. <laughs> right, time to get up, I think. So a morning woods game, I'm going to wait for that. I'm going to end this video here. The last thing you want to see is take the best time and get all the more work from where we are. Yeah, so I'll end this video here. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, you definitely want to see more. Hit the see it and subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you've not seen more of my videos, I'll post some one today for you. And if you're a subscriber to my channel, thank you very much.
there. Quickly showing you uh, English Woodsman's setup, which is the 8.3F UL gear, uh, floating cloud. He's uh, quite impressed with it, except the colour. He wants to get it torn down now before uh, people start coming up this where we are. But yeah, what a tent apparently. Right, let's go and see Vegan. And this is uh, Vegan Outdoorsman's setup. This is the Pomoli Flame, actually a, a hot tent, stove tent, whatever you're familiar with, whatever term you're familiar with. But looks really, really spacious. Designed as a one man tent, you could easily sleep two in there. Uh, obviously you see the foil lining as well, that's really going to sort of keep the heat in, especially when you've got a stove in there. Looks really good. Right, that's his setup. So yeah, uh, get mine turned down. Right, well that's me done for another video hope you've enjoyed it as much as i have uh, obviously there'll be a link to both dan's channels in the description box below uh, english woodsman and vegan outdoorsman uh, but for now uh, if you haven't subscribed subscribe by pressing this here in the middle I'll leave some videos either side for you other than that i'll see you in the next one